Proto Bro here, infamous brother to Mega Bro. And what I'm going to show you is a series of videos walking you through how to play Hearts of Iron 3 with the Black Ice mod. If you've played vanilla Hearts of Iron 3, you still will have to watch this tutorial, and I'll tell you why. Black Ice completely overhauls the entire game, adds so many different features, so many different mechanics to the game, that quite honestly, if I were to go back and play vanilla, I would have no idea how to play it. Because I want to say for the last couple of years, I've played Hearts of Iron 3 with Black Ice mod exclusively, and uh, they continually come out with new updates, new releases. I want to say every six months to a year, they come out with a new a new version of Black Ice, and because of that, I would say that Black Ice is one of the best mods pretty much ever created that I've played. And the reason I say that is it's one of those mods where you can install that one single mod and you don't feel like you had to, you have to add additional mods to kind of complete the game. And it's also one of those mods that does such a good job overhauling the game that you feel like you're playing basically a completely new game. So uh, in my first Let's Play, I'm going to play as Japan, primarily because I just don't see a whole lot of people playing as Japan that record their games. It's a very challenging country to play. Not so much on the early game, but it's more the the, the end game, the long-term game. Primarily because it's very difficult to, to hold off the U.S. Uh, I mean, realistically speaking, the game, I think, pretty accurately reflects the resource issues that uh, Japan has and the industrial might of the, the U.S. back in you know, the 1940s. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is we're gonna, I'm going to show you just kind of a broad overview of the game itself. Then I'm going to focus on the different provinces and kind of how the pro provincial system works in the game. Then I'm going to talk to you about the industry tab. We're going to go over diplomacy. And then um, can I kind of merge into politics, intelligence, and then I'm probably going to focus very heavily on the actual combat system the structure organizational of, of, of your army, of your air force, of your navy, and then the, the battle mechanics. Because uh, obviously, you know, you're playing this game not to build up a country, but to conquer your neighbors. So right now, currently, down here at the bottom right is where you're going to have your um, different tabs to kind of change what the skin of the, the world looks. Now, if you've never played Hearts of Iron 3, I'm just going to give you a quick span over here. It is literally the entire world map. And included in here are all these little areas that that you would fight for. Um, it's a heavily detailed game. It's one of the most challenging strategy games out there, I think, just because of the depth associated with it. Uh, I remember when I played Hearts of Iron. Yes, I even played the first one. That's <clears throat> uh, a very steep learning curve. It took me probably a month or two to really feel comfortable playing the game. Then I played Hearts of Iron 2, same issue. Hearts of Iron 3, the same exact thing. And then Hearts of Iron 3, Black Ice, the same thing. But after, uh, after spending that time learning the game, it was really worth it. So this is just kind of the basic uh, t terrain map right here. And then if you click this one here, this is simplified. This one I, I typically use. I don't find the first one to be very helpful, but this tells you the kind of landscape you're going to be doing combat on. I'm going to go in the, into this more detail later uh, with regards to the combat tab. But there you have that. Uh, political, which is what I, I stick to primarily when I play, as you'll see. This way it just kind of shows me who owns what. Uh, if you don't know, if you're kind of like brand new to the scenario and you're not familiar with who you control, uh, you would be deceived in thinking that China, or rather Japan, only owns this part right here, right? We actually have Manchuka as well. You can't tell from the color, but the way you would tell that is if you went to the Diplomacy tab in green, and you'd see kind of who you're controlled by. So, again, I usually play on the Political tab, but if you're if you're unsure kind of who your allies are, you go to this D Diplomacy tab and it'll tell you who your puppets are, who who are the countries that you don't puppet that are allied to you, uh, essentially your coalition partners. And that dictates the some of the some of the options that you have in your diplomacy tab, which we'll go into later. Uh, revolt risk, well, that's Intel. I don't really use this tab too too often, but this will give you an idea of kind of if you have spies in other countries, what sort of information you have about them. One of the things that Black Ice substantially adds to the game, I think, is intelligence gathering and espionage. So, for example, when I'm at war with the Republic of China, unless I have spies in their country, I really have no idea how many troops they have, uh, who I'm bordered up against. Um, so if I'm bordering, you know, right here, my spies can tell me accurate numbers of this stuff. Unlike the vanilla, which you would just know because you're right here. Uh, until you get, like, radar and, and those sort of things. 
Uh, revolt risk, this is as you conquer foreign land, so as I say move into China, you'll start seeing some red, some pink, that sort of thing. Those are areas that are um, subject to revolt. When they revolt, partisans will rise up and then it becomes an enemy unit that you have to fight. And so, unlike other strategy games, you can't just do this kind of eggshell approach where you have all your troops on the border when you're in foreign country. Because you could have revolt risk occur, have partisans rise up and revolt behind you, and uh, then you got to go back and deal with them before they start uh, conquering territory that have resources. I already talked about the diplomacy tab, region map. Um, this just talks about, I think, like really the uh, different aspects. I don't, I don't use this too much, so I'm not gonna pretend like I know what it is. I have no idea. Supply routes. These are really important, especially for J Japan uh, once you start to get to the mid game. This will tell you really like. Your, your supply routes. So notice here, this is Tokyo right here. Notice where Tokyo is sending supplies to. All these islands right here. So if I'm the US, I'm gonna wanna send in you know, cruisers, destroyers, um, submarines to here to hit the supply routes if, I, if I'm playing as, as the Americans. <clears throat> or here for example. And then as a Japanese, I'm obviously going to want to make sure that these routes are secure. Um, you can set up your own uh, trade routes or supply routes, which I'll explain a little bit later. But this is under the supply tab. I would definitely, if you're the Brits or the Japanese uh, or later game, the US, you really want to keep tabs on this um, because it can drastically affect whether your troops are getting fed, which in turn could affect their uh, attrition rates. Um, a lot of battles that I win aren't actually based on numbers. I basically just kill the attrition of my enemy and then force them to flee and rout, which is pretty accurate in terms of actual warfare. If you look at like the first Persian Gulf, Gulf War, for example, um, we didn't kill a whole lot of Iraqis. We just caused a whole lot of them surrender due to attrition, lo uh, redu reductions in morale, and cutting them off from their main forces. So these green ones here, notice here, for example, we've got this here, and it's going up into one of the mainlands. This is a uh, we're sending supplies. Let's see here, can I see what it is? Yeah, so see here if we put, hover your, your uh, arrow over that green arrow there. Shipping 9.1 supplies every day, ships 50 fuel every day. So we're shipping fuel from here, I want to say up to there. Uh, and uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself, so let me just hold on to that, okay? So hold on to that thought, just keep keep focus on these supply lines, I'll explain a little bit more in, a, in later. Infrastructure tab. Again, another thing that Black Ice has really maximized and made heavily important in the game, um, including weather, So, which, which I'll go into in a little bit. But notice here these red. Um, if there's a red infrastructure area, that either means that I don't want to be sending my troops through there because they're quite simply not going to be able to get through there, uh, or they're going to move really slow, or I'm going to be limited in the number of troops that I can send through that area. So essentially what I would want to do as the Japanese moving into the the Chinese territory is I'm going to want to send my troops along this yellow here. And another thing that intelligence is going to do for me is it's going to tell me which of these areas are yellow, red, that sort of thing. So again, intel is really big in this game. Um, obviously, as you can see here, I don't have a whole lot of options here in terms of going into uh, northern China. So probably what I'm going to want to do is utilize my navy and take advantage of that aspect to take over ports and then kind of branch out that way. So again, that's in the infrastructure tab, a really important tool to utilize at least in the planning phases. And then after you launch your operations to kind of continually go back and refocus on and determine what the infrastructure is. Uh, one thing that I will note that I also will revisit for you later on is that you could, once you conquer a territory, the infrastructure will be damaged. So it'll basically be reduced in time. So I don't know what territory I'm currently on here. Let me see here, let's uh, click this one. So this is a uh, Kagoshima right here. That's the infrastructure of that particular province. That is the max that it can go, so it's fully green. This could get reduced down to say here or halfway if it were invaded and attacked, so it would take damage. And then over time it would rebuild. But that's really important to know if you're, say, if you're Germany invading Russia or the Japanese invading China and you're trying to blitz through, uh, blitz through the ranks of the Chinese, the deeper you go and the more combat that you're engaged in, the more heavily damaged your infrastructure will become, which one, affects the number of troops you can float through there, two, affects the speed with which your troops float through there, and three, it affects the supply lines of whether your troops actually get supplies. Uh, I can tell you that an army with empty stomachs is worthless. 
uh, and this game really holds true to that mantra. Uh, if, you're, if your men are not getting food, if your trucks and tanks are not getting fuel, they literally don't do anything in, the, in, in that province until they actually get it. Uh, and uh, I've seen you know, a Chinese militia, single militia unit, take out a Japanese tank unit uh, or battalion, however you want to say it, <clears throat> division, there we go, division, uh, based on the fact that the, the tank division has no, um, has no fuel. So, uh, let's see here. I just want to make sure I'm getting my terms right. <laughs> I'm an Air Force guy. I'm not an Army guy. So, when you start talking about battalions, divisions, all that stuff, I'm like, what? All right. Um, so, anyways, as I get sidetracked. So, these are, these are right here are all battalions. And they're connected to a division. Which I will, again, get into later. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, VP map, these are just telling you so as you conquer territories, certain areas are worth more than others. In this case here, these are victory point areas. So let's see here, this one is worth... Where are you at? I have no idea how much this one's worth. Let's just pretend it's worth one. Some are worth more than others. Um, but what that essentially tells you is if you go in the diplomacy tab, I have no idea why this is bouncing around. Uh, is it the diplomacy tab? No. There we go. Statistics tab. Brigade. Yeah, all right. Sorry, I got a little excited, huh? <laughs> it's been a little while since I've played. I probably should have played this before I started giving you guys a walkthrough on how to do it. Anyways, just note, and I will explain later, there are certain provinces that are worth more than others. Why is that important? Oh, why do you ask? So, for example, these guys, Shang, Shang Tsai, or Shang Zi, or Shang Tzu, or whatever you say. I'm sure there's some Chinese person out there who can actually pronounce it properly, but so let's say Shang Tsai, Shang Tzu. If I want to conquer them, I can either take every single province in their territory, which can be demanding. Especially when you look at the infrastructure, which I have a vague idea of what it's like. It sucks. Or what I can do is I can take literally these two spots. That right there. Points one. There it is. See down there at the right above? It says points one. Right above the mini-map. And Toyon. Tyon. Points two, right above the minimap. If I conquer these two areas, I effectively win the war against them, and they will turn into my puppet. Um, that's if I'm trying to make them my puppet. If I'm trying to annex them, um, sometimes you need to do more than that, which I will explain in the battle or the uh, the, the battle mechanics, the war mechanics. But just know that this this VP map can be very very important. Um, for example, with China. They have here, 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 right? So they got it all sporadic about. You don't have to go all the way back here, which I'll show you. All the way back here, take all their VP to conquer China, necessarily. Um, there's a variety of ways to beat China, one of which is making them a puppet of your empire. If that's the case, then you just have to conquer most of the VP areas to make that happen. So, like, you know, maybe to here, which is still a substantial amount of territory, right? But you don't have to take all of them. Um, but it just depends on what kind of victory condition you're looking to achieve, which I'll go into later. So that's the VP map. Theater map. Alright, so this I will, again, I'll go into more detail on the battle mechanics and how to structure your military later. Just know that with HQs, right now I have two HQs, which basically means I have two, two basically armies. Okay, I've got this army and I've got this army. And underneath this army is all these guys and underneath this army is all these guys and what you can do is as an HQ here and here um, basically divvy out war footings so maybe here I want them to be really defensive which means that if they're attacked they will do certain things in combat 
um, that are of a defensive or uh, nature, which may draw out battles, uh, may make their may make them uh, last longer. Whereas with this one, I may want with a very aggressive war footing, which means that the in combat um, the divisions will be more likely to take risks that could result in higher casualties but quicker ends to the conflict. All right. So that's under the HQ tab. And you can have more than two, you can have three, four, five. Um, it's really just a matter of how big your military is and kind of where you're at um, on the map. All right, so this is a really cool tab. Uh, I don't use it as much as I really should, but you can see it can be very helpful. What this does is it focuses around your particular air forces. So, for example, I have here... Uh, uh, these guys are some fighters. This is their range right here. Right there. So it just gives you an idea what the range is for a particular Air Force. Um, looks like I've got some up here. But anyways, that's this one right here. Air map. Uh, naval map, which again, kind of shows you the resources collection, but also shows you where your navies are. This naval base from here, which our fleets can operate. Um, it tells you essentially how much repair each uh, ship will get. Again, I'll, I'll focus that focus on that in a little bit later. Strength. Um, again, I don't focus on this too much. I probably should. It's helpful. All these tabs are very helpful. I'm just lazy and don't like to refer to them. But this will tell you the strength of your division. So right here, I must have a fair amount of guys because it's screen. And I do. I have four divisions here. Here. Oh, look. I have... What is that? Four divisions and two uh, core commanders. Here, not so strong, because it's a darker green. Yeah, just got two militia. So, you can use this if, if you're, for example, if you're uh, Russia with a big front, or you're the US on multiple fronts, and you're unsure of the strength of where you're, you're kind of the strength of your line, for example. I guess, you know, Russia would be actually a really good example of that big front. You're unsure, like, kind of with the weak points in your line. You could definitely use this, uh, this, this strength map mode tab to figure out, okay, where do I need to, to buff up my lines? Or my reserves, right? And resource map. This one I use a lot. And I will explain why. Because it is the backbone of your economy. As you can see here, this gives you a different look on the maps. Um, we've got industries here. We've got electricity. We've got rare minerals, um, so on and so forth. The light blue are really good. These are resources, or uh, these are uh, specialized resources. Um, when you're invading foreign countries, this is one of the things you want to look at. So for example, China has this here, which gives you a plus 15% on heart attack if you conquer this. Heart attack are for tanks, um, bazookas, basically those sort of things. Heart attacks essentially it's used against, it's used to punch through lines, uh, typically most effective against uh, armored units. They have aluminum, which includes, increases your air build speed or decreases your air build speed by 15% so you can make uh, planes quicker. So, so on and so forth, right? So these are really important to know where they're at. You're gonna wanna really focus on those first and foremost because they're gonna drastically improve your war fighting capabilities. Um, and then there's these green here, if you see an area that's green, this is industry. Just kind of keep that in the back of your mind right now. Think industry. I'll explain that more in a little bit. But just think, okay, all these greens are industry. I really want to protect these. All right? Green is good. Green, you got to protect. Green, absolutely protect. Okay? Same goes for your enemy. Green, you, uh, these are their industry. I'll explain that more. And then the other tab, uh, other icons here are really... I don't know what that is. Uh, major air base. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Again, I, this is a brand new Black Ice. So they've even, they've added new tabs. These uh, white tabs here are new. I'm not familiar with these. Um, I have an idea what they are now. That's industry. Uh, that's air base. All right, cool. Um, but then the individual tab. Let's see. For your individual provinces. Let's go with... Let's find one that has a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, all right. Yeah, this one. All right, all right. So, Fukak, Fukuwaku, I, yeah, I don't know, I'm sorry, I completely pushed it, that's not who I want to click, so ignore them. Okay, this guy, right here. Uh, this is Sasebo, which is right here, and this will tell you everything that is in Sasebo, in the individual, uh, this little province right here. 
here are the resources which are also up here so this is your master list of what you have and this is what the individual province produces for you okay uh, I can tell you right now Japan makes a boatload of energy which is this right here and so one of the things that I do is I try and sell as much of it as I can on the world market and then I turn that money and I try and buy things that I don't have a whole lot of which is like rare minerals and uh, metal so we haven't started the game yet but after a week you'll see all this change a lot of this will turn red which means I'm using more than I actually have as you build more of your military and build more of your industry to make basically more stuff quicker and a lot more of it uh, you will use more things like metal and so therefore unless you conquer more territories or trade for more metal or do research that allows you to produce more metal you will run out of it and your tanks will not run and you will not be able to do anything so anyways back to my focus on the province so here is your focus on what this particular province provides if you go to that resource tab right there it'll actually show you right so you can see the rare minerals right there you can see the uh, energy you can't quite see the uh, metal um, but if we went somewhere else you could probably see you know like for example here the metal energy raw materials all right here <clears throat> but then the other thing that, that that you don't see here that you have to actually have to click the province for to see is right here so we talked about this already your infrastructure uh, we have three industry here which I'll explain in a little bit and then we have some rare extraction coal mining and steel refinery again these are new features that were added kind of recently by black ice um, my understanding of what they do is they, they essentially expand what the province is producing um, sounds great right why don't we just throw a whole bunch of stuff in that well every time you click one of these to upgrade it it's going to use up some of your industry to build it and as you will see building a military is very very expensive um, so it can be very hard to kind of build these tabs up uh, these tabs are probably more best fit for like the US or another or like maybe Russia that has a ton of resources and a ton of money um, <clears throat> so that kind of uh, long 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 term thinking end game you're just kind of just going crazy on the production um, in our case, I think we're probably not going to focus too much on building up things like this. Instead, we're just going to conquer territory and kind of do it that way. Uh, and then you see right here the oil refinery. So if we had, we don't have any oil here now, but I'm wondering if we built one of these, whether it would actually start producing oil. Which is actually a really cool concept. I didn't realize uh, that that was an option. Um, you can actually, in two ways, uh, build up a province build up your like an air base in your province or a naval station or those sort of things you can either do it manually from the province so like right here we can either well we already maxed out that stuff so that's cool <clears throat> come on here okay so we could expand the naval base this way by just clicking this like that uh, or what we can do is we can go to the production tab and just build naval uh, bases and then as they become available kind of plunk them down wherever we want I tend to do that just because why not um, this doesn't build any faster having it here uh, than if you do in the production tab. Uh, and then, you know, if you change your mind six months into the game, um, this is stuck here, right? If you do in the production tab, you can stick it wherever you want. Um, so you can go through all these. You can build them up, build them up as you want. This is a coastal fortification. So if someone tries an amphibious assault, it'll make it more difficult. This is actual uh, pillboxes and then fortresses. This is just a, a cheaper. A lesser version of a fortress and essentially they increase the defense of your land forces so if someone's assaulting um, they'll be harder to basically overrun this is your anti-aircraft so if someone brings in planes to do a bombing run or is flying over that province the uh, anti-aircraft will shoot at them and then as you get the technology for it you'll get um, options to build radar stations which just kind of increases your in intelligence um, and also increases the range of your intelligence from that particular province. Uh, rocket sites are self-explanatory. It allows you to build rockets and launch them from that site. Industry capacity, uh, which I'll explain in more detail, but then there's also heavy industry capacity. So once you max this out, you can start building these, um, which again, is just a, a, another option that Black Ice added to say, hey, we don't want to limit you to the amount of industry that you want to build. Um, 
Again, I, I forgot to mention this on the front end, but one of the big things that Black Ice was trying to do is they're trying to trying to replicate as much as possible the World War II experience. And what I mean that by that is industrial, industrialization on just a ginormous, massive scale. Uh, vanilla version kind of gets that, but what Black Ice does is it really puts a foot stomp on it. Um, and so what you have when you get to the basically the, the combat phase of the game, if you start in like 36, so you know 39 when combat starts, or 38 if you're the Japs, or uh, 37 if the Japs, is uh, you have a much larger array of of divisions and corps and armies going at each other and air forces uh, than you do in the vanilla version. Um, I'm not going to explain the rest of this stuff, but as you can see, there's just a lot of options here that you can play with for your um, for that particular province, which I think which is really cool, right? Because it gives you the opportunity to really structure your industrialization and the way that you want to play the game around how you want to do it. You're not kind of put into this cookie cutter way. To, to play the game. Instead, what you have is you know all these different options to really play around with how you're going to do it. Uh, before I, I move on from this little tab here, one additional thing is these right here. This is the intel that you're receiving from this province um, nine, which adds on to this right here. So basically, the spies, and just really the purpose of that is that this adds up, right? So every province gives you a couple of these, and then every month you get so many and you're expending them in other countries doing intel and, and sort of thing. Uh, revolt risk, again I already showed you the tab that shows you this, but this is just the actual province tab. Um, this is the number, amount of manpower you're getting every month and then leadership. So these two here deal with uh, building, uh, building forces, so I'll go into that in more detail later. Uh, and then here, this here, covert missions, this is where if you're in foreign country you can kinda do this stuff here. Um, I haven't played with this too much, and it keeps getting expanded on, but it's a really cool option that you'll probably see me doing while I'm playing the game, is these covert missions <clears throat> that allow you to do a variety of these things. So it used to just be offensive, where you could just do sabotage, help partisans, those sort of things, but now what they've added to Black Ice is these sort of things, like evacuate enemy special specialists, evacuate specialists, all these sort of things. So now you can actually use it as a strategic tool in a def defensive way as well. So you can see as the, as the Russians, for example, this being a very helpful helpful tool. Um, sorry, and then allied objectives. Um, this just tells, hey, I want you allies to make this an objective of, uh, of your playthrough. So it kind of automates what you want your allies to do. And then finally, and this will be more the combat tab, this will kind of, you know, these are the, 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 the adjacent territories. And this is a, a map that was added in, in Black Ice. They, they try to customize all the different provinces, and so you'll see this here for that, and so forth. So, uh, let's see, Tokyo. You get Tokyo. So, all right, so uh, with that, I think that's enough talking. That That's kind of just the basic overview of this little map right here. Uh, I'll go over this stuff right here later on, um, but stay tuned for my next video where I will start walking you through the production tab. All right, thanks, guys.